content before conversion presented by Jacob Brennan of Stilo. So welcome, Jacob. Thank you very much. Um, I'll go ahead and share my screen now. And, um... and I will remind everyone if you put any questions you have in the Q&A and we will get to them after the presentation. Okay, sounds good. All right, so uh, good afternoon, everyone. Um, I'm gonna start with a uh, little bit of a uh, quick introduction to Stilo. So we've been in the structured content processing industry for around 30 years now and brought to market specialist content processing tools. So our first product here is called Omnimark, uh, which is a programming language used for manipulating XML content, publishing it and enriching it. Um, and then our next products are all built off of that uh, programming language. So next we have Optimizer, which is a tool to help analyze uh, data content collections and identify their reuse opportunities. And then we have Migrate, which is our automate, automatic, automated conversion tool that makes the conversion uh, from your legacy content to data super easy, whether you decide to take on the work yourself or have our team do the conversion for you. Um, and then at the bottom here, we can see some of the companies that we've uh, helped with their conversion projects in the past. Uh, with these last two products here, Migrate and Optimizer, uh, Migrate makes it easy to convert your content to DITA. Optimizer allows you to harness the reuse potential of DITA. But what about if you aren't entirely sure about transferring all of this content over? Our newest product, Analyzer, aims to help with that. So Analyzer is an interactive platform enabling users to identify their content reuse across multiple source formats and report potential cost savings. This can be beneficial to your organizations, especially in the planning stages of your conversion projects. So um, as we all know, data can be very useful to add into your organization's content structure. The opportunity to potentially reuse your content is the main reason many people switch to data. This reuse can lead to time and money savings, but finding out how much you can really benefit from use can be a tedious and time consuming task sometimes. Um, I'd like to demonstrate this by imagining a familiar scenario for many people. Imagine that you're an author and your management asks you to review a small section of your content and update that part of it. For this, we can imagine it's something like a hazard statement. It sounds like an easy task, but can, can prove to be quite time consuming once we, once we actually get into it. Now you have to go through each individual document and find that hazard statement to then go and change. The document then may have to go through a review process now as well, which will take even longer, and each individual document would need to be reassessed. Uh, this approach to keeping all of your legacy content in its existing format may be okay for smaller companies or smaller projects, where a small collection of documents needs to be maintained. But once the size of the collection gets to be large enough, small tasks can very quickly turn into large ones. So if we continue with our story above, you think converting your legacy content is a good idea, you would like to explore those options. Reuse will result in cost savings over time for your company, and you express this to your management. But without having a concrete answer in terms of how much content can be reused and the cost savings associated with that, it'll be very hard to have a good answer uh, when going to them. The conversion itself may incur some costs as well, so ensuring that the savings in the long run will be more uh, than the losses in the short term are also very important to the overall benefit of your organization. Migrate makes conver converting your content easy and having a budget in mind can make, uh, make that decision even easier. Going through all your content by hand and finding the areas where reuse can be applied is a daunting task and can lead to many headaches. Trying to trace everything together without forgetting anything uh, and remember where everything goes can easily become too much. Now, what happens if the content is just slightly different? For example, turning off the power and ensuring the power is turned off can mean the same thing, but does that really count towards your potential content reuse? This is where Analyzer can come in and give all of these questions a simple answer. So now we'll go over to um, our demo here uh, with Analyzer. So this is the uh, summary page uh, of our Analyzer software. 
This is the first page that you see when you first access Analyzer, and it shows you information on your entire collection of documents. So first and foremost, we have to have a collection uh, to analyze. So we'd have to start by creating our first collection, uh, which can be done by just clicking this button here uh, that says create collection. So now we can add a couple things in here. Um, first and foremost, our collection name, uh, which is pretty self-explanatory just to get it to uh, differentiate itself. Now this threshold value uh, is how different each of our, uh, our strings can be. So the default here is 5%, and I think that's good for this demo's purposes. Uh, this means that strings can differ by up to and including 5% edit distance. Um, next is the short word threshold. Um, the default value here is two. Um, and that means that uh, any word that is shorter than two letters will not be compared by analyzer. Uh, your short word, short word threshold is essentially uh, a word too short to be compared in analyzer. Um, next, we have our span threshold. Uh, this is our minimum span length that will be compared. If a span falls under the threshold value, Analyzer will not compare the results. Uh, and lastly, we can select our importer for the legacy content we want to analyze. Currently, it is in docx, and I'll leave it as that for now. Um, but we can also take uh, FrameMaker and HTML there as well. So if we wanted to uh, go ahead and hit confirm changes, that would create a new collection for us. Um, but for the purposes of this demo, I'm just going to leave it with the Stilo demo collection uh, that I have here now. Uh, and as you can see, we can go through some of our other collections uh, that have been created in here as well. Um, so next up, now that we've made our collection, we would need to start adding documents into that collection. So next step would be going over to this upload documents um, button over here, and clicking on it. Then uh, you can either choose to uh, drag and drop your files in or hit the choose files button here and it'll open your Windows browser um, and then you can choose files manually. Once those are done, you can just hit the upload button and those will be uploaded. As you can see, I've already got a lot of uh, documents uploaded here for our demo purposes. Um, so we don't have to sit and watch those upload. Now we can actually look at some of the information that we see here on the summary page. Um, we'll start in the top left and work our way down. So first and foremost, we have our potential content reduction. Um, this is a percentage which represents the approximate ratio that the content could be reduced by if all exact and similar matches were deduplicated. Uh, to the right of that, we have uh, some more information, such as the number of documents, the disk size of the collection, and a total character count across the uploaded collection. Um, this last panel in the strip represents the estimated cost savings amount. Uh, this is calculated based on the value in the savings calculator found at the bottom of the page, uh, which we'll get to in just a moment. Uh, next in our uh, list here, we have a table uh, showing uh, accounts of all of our objects, such as paragraphs, spans, tables, and image objects from the source content. Uh, Analyzer shows details such as the number of exact matches, similar matches, and unique items of the objects compared across the uploaded collection in the same table. Um, these results uh, can also be shown in a graphical format. Uh, and they're mapped onto the next uh, couple graphs there. Uh, these graphs are entirely customizable between your donut, uh, your radial bar, polar area, bar, and pie graphs. So if I just wanna change it, I can just easily change it to a pie graph there. And in your account settings, you can also change the colors out uh, to fit your organization and make it look exact, exactly as you need it to be. Um, and then if we go to the very bottom of this page, we have our savings calculator. Our savings calculator is uh, a very important part of our product here. Um, and it is a dynamic table that the user can edit all of these entries uh, to make sure that it uh, reflects uh, their own uh, benefits properly. So 
Um, this is a module that allows the user to project cost savings in the areas of their organizations that will benefit from content reuse. So it's filled with default entries, uh, but those are once again, entirely customizable. So this is, um, uh, you can add the uh, costs incurred by your uh, reviewing department or authoring department. Uh, each entry can be seen as a different department. So each company has different sectors that can benefit from this. For example, if we're looking at uh, this reviewing cost, the 1.5 million can be seen as salaries for that department for the year. Um, and then the 20% weight would mean that there is only expected to be a 20% reduction in content leading to only 20% of the savings. Uh, a weight of one, uh, would mean that 100% of the content would be reduced, leading to 100% of the savings, uh, such as in this translation uh, example that we have here. Um, so a really big advantage of our savings calculator is that we allow the user to dictate the equation they need to realize their goals. Each piece that the user enters can be direct numbers from their company's yearly expenditures, as well as their approximate weight. So, um, you can really uh, change all this around and make sure that you get everything correctly for your organizations. You can have all of your costs set up as um, you can go through and look at last year's expenditures on all these different things and find with your content reuse and the specific weights that you find, um, a, a total savings can be calculated and a bottom line can be shown. Uh, this uh, sum of the individual savings from each task is shown at the bottom in the total savings field or in the estimated cost savings value shown at the top of the dashboard like I saw before. Um, lastly, on the right, we have a recent activity panel. Um, and this is just to show uh, different documents that have been uploaded uh, in case multiple people are working on the same collection. So multiple users can go through and see all of this information. Multiple users can be added to um, these collections. Uh, so not just one person has access to this. Uh, there are multiple people who have access and can use this interactive um, approach here. So next up, we have our sequence browser in uh, Analyzer. And this is where um, a lot of our reuse uh, is found. So the sequence browser page shows the user similar and exact matches based on a document comparison basis. Sequences are consecutive paragraph elements that match in series in different locations across the document collection. This sequences pane is where we can see where the potential content reuse percentage analyzer found came about. So that 35.68% from before, uh, we can go through each document on a sequence basis, get very granular and see exactly where that came from and uh, see how important that would be to our organizations um, the left pane shows the reference document where matches are found against, and the right pane shows the document where the match is found. The right pane document is dynamic, so as the user parses through matches against a specific sequence in the left document, the right document will update with the corresponding match. So navigating matches and sequences in the sequence browser tab can be done multiple ways. Firstly is the drop down menu under the sequence viewer tab. This allows the user to skip to the file of interest where matches are to be found against on the left-hand side. So we can just quickly jump through and go to another document, find that there's 44 matches in that one. Um, we can even go down to this one and find that there's 11 matches in this document. Um, and then we can parse through them with these arrows. So, um, so the navigation arrows at the top of the sequence viewer tab also allow you to parse through all of your matches and sequences. Um, it will start at the first sequence found in the selected file with matches. As the next arrow is clicked, uh, the browser will parse through the different match locations of the selected sequence. Uh, once exhausting the matches of the current sequence, the browser will go to the next chronologically available sequence and repeat the process of parsing its matches. Uh, the sequence number can be noted and jumped to by typing its value after double clicking on it to edit the field. So if I just want to jump over here to let's say 26, for example, I can do that quickly by just double clicking on it. 
So uh, as we're going through here, we can also see that we have our sequence matches. That is the last way that we can navigate through our sequence browser tab here. Um, so as you can see with this one specific um, snippet of co or snippet of content that we have here, we have four different matches in four different documents, and we can just easily go to these specific documents and make sure that those are all correct. So um, we also have here on our 26th, this one here shows that it is a 98% match. Um, what this means is that there are some differences in the uh, content, uh, but since it falls within that 5%, um, that 5% that error that we had before our 5% 5 threshold um, that we put in when we were creating our collection, this falls within that error. Um, so it does get picked up. The only real differences here are that in this one, it says the desktop compiler. Meanwhile, this one says the batch compiler. There's also some slight differences in the uh, code. Uh, this one has an OMBC and this one has an OMDC. Um, again, not really that big of a difference, but you can go through and change that based on what you really want out of your uh, analysis and uh, how exact you need it to be. Um, if we go to this one over here, there's another example um, in number 19. Uh, and this one is a 96% match, which is very close uh, to not being a match at all, but uh, it, it is the lowest that we can possibly get to. So the only real difference here as well is that now it is a Omnimark concurrent processing engine as opposed to a Omnimark single processing engine. Uh, lastly, in this uh, sequence viewer tab, we can also get very, uh, we can change how granular we see everything. So with this one, we can see that it is found in three different documents, but it's a very long uh, piece of uh, content here. Um, <clears throat> so if we want to get even closer and take a closer look at it, uh, we can see that these bubbles also have different matches as well. Um, so if we just click on this part here, it will find that this small piece has been found in four documents, as opposed to the uh, large piece being found in only three documents. Um, <clears throat> down here at the bottom, we lastly have, uh, we have a couple more things here. Uh, we have our most popular sequences panel to the left, uh, which charts their sequences based on their length. Their length is found by dividing the number of consecutive matchings by similar paragraph items. Uh, the popularity is also given, which is the number of different locations the sequence matches in. Uh, the starting paragraph number is given in the left column for reference. The current paragraph sequences pane shows a list of all the matches of the current sequence and the match of its granular sequences. These are sequences within sequences that match across the collection. They are sorted by shortest length, um, to longest with information on the starting paragraph number for reference. And then lastly, we have our document at a glance, which can be found at the right of the previous panels. In this panel, the user is given a graphical representation of the potential reuse of the specific document selected in the sequence viewer pane. So for this one, you can see our equal, our similar and our unique matches. Um, and again, these are completely customizable uh, based on what you what you need. Um, a really big advantage of uh, Analyzer is that you do have uh, the ability to interact with these screens, uh, as well as our uh, savings calculator before, um, to really make sure that everything is exactly how you want it to be. Uh, you can go in and dive in and make sure everything fits um, and everything is up to your standards uh, before you convert. Uh, you don't just get a uh, like PDF printout or uh, something that you can't actually see. You actually can go in and check all of your content out. Um, so let's go to our last page here in our analyzer report. Um, this is our document report. So as you can see through here, um, this page provides information 
on the reuse of the collection on a by document basis. So here the user can select a document and see its individual contribution to the overall reuse in the entire collection. So we can select between the different documents in the collection and we can see um, the document's potential content reuse percentage as calculated by Analyzer. So as you can see, some of these have a very high uh, content reuse, such as this active desktop compiler percentage here at 88%. Um, and then some of them have pretty much nothing. Uh, this one is completely zero. Uh, this one has a very, this has one, which is very small. Um, so you can see how much of these documents can be reduced uh, by document as opposed to the whole thing. Um, once again, we have a table here listing all of our objects, our paragraphs, our tables, our images, and our spans. Uh, and we can see our exact matches, our similar items, our unique items, and our total count. Um, once again, those are being mapped onto these graphs down here, um, which can be, once again, changed uh, entirely customizable to what you need them to be for your organizations. Lastly, the user is given a list of top paragraphs and spans, which show snippets of content from popular matches in the selected document. It also shows their duplication counts and a list of the different locations of the duplications by file name. So in this one here, we can see that this is just a snippet. It doesn't show the full uh, content here, just a little piece of it. Um, and then we can see that it has been duplicated 17 times and then we can also see that each of these um, is found in each of these documents as well. Uh, so you can go through and check out those documents on a document basis, or you can go back to our sequence browser and you can search through for those sequences and see exactly how granular you need it to be. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, just go over some main points here. Uh, there are many benefits to reusing your content using a structured content structure like Ditta. Uh, plenty of time and money can be saved by converting, but plenty of issues can arise before and during the conversion process. Having a concrete plan on how the process will go will save plenty of time and headaches. Uh, having a concise budget can help you find the conversion option that is best for you and your organization. Uh, seeing a real world savings estimate can also allow for a better understanding of how a conversion can help you and allow for more of a streamlined approach to either converting yourself or getting the help you need to get the conversion done. Uh, our savings calculator, as stated before, is one of our most important features as it allows you to be dynamic with the issues we may face and your, or, your own organization's needs. Our interactive approach to analysis puts the user in control, giving you the flexibility to tailor the tools to your exact preferences. So um, now if there's any questions. Thank you, Jacob. Um, we don't have any questions at the moment, but please feel free to put those in the Q&A. Um, this was very informative and very definitely cost-effective way to mm -hmm. read content. Here I have a question. After running the analyzer, what's next? Uh, after running analyzer, you can see all of, uh, you can go back to your summary page um, and see everything that's needed through that. Um, but most importantly, uh, you would be able to um, uh, export this to be able to show to your management or um, make sure that you have the funding available and then eventually um, going forward to a conversion, whether that be uh, doing it yourself or having some help through Migrate. So the analysis is mostly just to try and get you to see uh, the cost, of, cost benefit of converting all of your content to a structured content system. So a couple more questions. What are the cost of these tools? Uh, the cost of Analyzer? Mm -hmm. I, um, I believe that's what they mean. Uh, I'm, I'm not exactly sure what, the, what that is off the top of my head right now. 
Uh, I'd have to get back to you on an email with that um, because I'm not exactly sure uh, what the numbers lead up to right now. Okay, and a follow up from Marie, um, then the migrate tool is connected to the analyzer tool. Uh, it's not entire, it's not connected right now. Um, what we would do is uh, you would have to send your content through to us uh, for migrate. Uh, so all the content would have to go into analyzer. And then if you decided that you wanted to go through with Migrate, then your content would then have to be uploaded to another portal um, to migrate all of that content across. So it isn't entirely, it isn't connected as of right now. Um, we hope to eventually be able to do that, but um, uh, it, is, it is very simple to go from Analyzer to Migrate. Okay, another question. Can Analyzer be used to analyze content in a CCMS repository? Uh, I'm, uh, I, I don't see why not. I'm not entirely sure of the, uh, the actual uh, way you would go about that. Uh, I don't know if that's any different. I'd have to ask, um, some questions about that, uh, but you can analyze anything that's in your docx, uh, FrameMaker, and HTML files. Uh, essentially, those files need to be uploaded into the analyzer portal for them to be able to be analyzed. Okay, so uh, some, and I, I'm sorry, TJ, I see your question here. Uh, just for clarification, it sounds like, uh, is that about the migrate tool? He says, uh, before you upload it, uh, the migrate tool is connected to the analyzer tool. Is that the reference there? And if you could type that in just for clarification. Uh, so what I'm, what I'm hearing is this, the functionality of this is going to be specific to the company. And that will probably also relate to the cost and all those things. And you would want to uh, have that with the company, that, that meeting to see exactly what could be provided. Uh, yeah, they, it would be passed over as a portal for them to upload the content that they need into the specific um, collections that they would want them in and then analyze those against each other. Um, and then with the savings calculator as it is now, then they would have the functionality to change it to fit their uh, specific needs going forward. So it wouldn't be us going through and updating all of this uh, information here. It would be your, uh, yourself going through and just putting your own numbers in, um, making sure that <clears throat> you get them all right and making sure that they're all uh, exactly as you need them um, to actually show a, uh, an appropriate number for your specific organization. So I have a clarification from TJ. He's saying Analyzer works before the CCMS. Yeah. Right. So um, we have okay. someone else after seeing where there is content reuse across multiple documents. Is there an automated way to update the content? To update, well, uh, you would first go through Migrate uh, to translate it over to DITA and then Optimizer to harness that, uh, that reuse. Okay. Um, does Stilo offer a product or services that converts content from one format to another, such as from Word to XML? Uh, migrate converts migrate converts word to xml okay um it converts uh your word it converts frame maker it converts uh indesign html uh things like that all over to your xml standard that you specified okay oh we have another one would optimize r be a better option for identifying reuse opportunities for content already in the ccms uh, i 
after it's been converted to data, I, it would have to be uploaded into Optimizer. I'm honestly, I'm not that well versed in Optimizer right now. Um, so I'm not really sure. I'd have to uh, get back to you with an email on that one if you'd like to send me your contact and I can get to the bottom of that. And if you uh, could you uh, give us on the display uh, possibly your email one here so that anybody else who wants to contact you could see that, as well as when I send out for everyone the recording, I will also include Jacob's email on that. Okay, yeah, that sounds good. Um, my email. Uh... And I, to. I have um, in the chat. I'm um, sorry, in the Q and A, Rob, who has emailed as well. We'll make sure I give you that. Still there. Can you see that text, the annotation there, with my email? Absolutely. There. Okay. Okay. That is very good. Let oh, I do. So optimizer will deduplicate data automatically at the element level. Right now it does not work within a CCMS. So ideally you would duplicate all your content before uploading it to your CCMS. Integration with CCMS, CCMSs is in the scope. That's from uh, TJ. Okay. Thank you, TJ, for uh, clarifying on that. Okay. And thanks for everything here. So mm -hmm. let's see if there are going to be any more questions. These have been amazingly good questions. So. Jacob, was there anything you'd like to add before we uh, sign off? It looks like um, we we don't have any other questions. Uh, uh, no, I don't think that there's anything else um, for me to clarify. If there's any other questions, then you can reach me at my email there. Uh, and thank you for uh, thank you for your time. Appreciate it. Absolutely, it was a great presentation. And again. I have this recorded. We'll be sending out the recording to all the re who registered, as well as including uh, Jacob's email. Okay. Well, that wraps up another CIDM webinar. Thank you very much for joining, and we hope to see you all soon. Okay, bye-bye. Bye.